as a reseller, there aren't many sounds that are better than this sound right here. In this video, I'm going to show you five different things to focus on that will take your listings looking like you're a beginner all the way to looking like you're a pro. And at the end of this video, I've got an extra tip for you about how to build up that feedback that will make your account more attractive to buyers. So let's dive right in and get started. The first one that I want to cover is finding comps for items that you're considering selling. And there's three different ways that you can do that. First, let's talk about what a comp is and why that's important. A comp is a comparable item that's sold for what you're considering buying. So let me give you an example. You're out at a garage sale and you see this t-shirt, 2001 Chicago Blues t-shirt. And you wanna know, is that worth selling? So we're gonna look up comps for that. The easiest is the eBay app. And I'm gonna look at two different things on there. The first one I wanna see is how many vintage blues t-shirts are there? But then I want to find out, I'm gonna scroll down, click sold, and I wanna see how many of them have sold. Once I know how many are listed and how many are sold, it's called the sell-through rate. And that sell-through rate is gonna tell me what percent of the items listed have sold over the last 90 days. And that's gonna help me know whether or not this is something that's gonna sit for a long time or something that I can sell fairly quickly. And then under sold, I wanna look and see how much are they actually selling for? Because it doesn't matter what people ask. If people are listing this shirt and they're asking $500, but they're only selling for 30, I'm gonna get 30. That brings us to the second thing that will really amp up your listings. And that is the title. The title is the first thing that a buyer is going to read. And if you have been a reseller for any length of time at all, you know that a lot of times <laughs> the title is the only thing they read and we're just hoping we can get them to read the whole title. There are a couple of things to really keep in mind when you're making a title. And the first is there are 80 characters in the eBay title and you want to use them. What you put in that title is what the engine, the search engine on eBay is going to look at the most when it's trying to find your item. So let's talk about what that is. The first thing I want to put is the brand. It's one of the, if there's a brand, I want to put that. I put the most likely searched for terms first. If I know I've got a vintage LL Bean shirt, I know that a lot of people are going to look for a vintage LL Bean. I'm going to start with that. Then I'm going to work through the size and the color in men's or women's Whatever term I think is most likely to be searched first, that's the order that I put them in the title. One of the things that the beginners do, including me when I was a beginner, that pros do not do, is when they make their title, when I was a beginner, I wanted to, the title to be a complete sentence. I tried to put in punctuation. I tried to make it grammatically correct. That doesn't matter at all in your title. Your title needs to have all the search terms that are going to be looked for. A pro, they're not worried about grammar. They're not worried about a complete sentence. They are worried about having all of the search terms in there so that a buyer can find it. The next thing that I want to talk to you about in creating a, a, a listing that looks like it was done by a pro are the photos. Photos don't have to be complicated and eBay has done some things to make this process so much better. They've given us a lot of pictures that we can put into the listing. You will hear some people, they take two or three pictures. Once I've got that thing set up so that I can take pictures of it, I can take a lot of pictures. I don't want a buyer to have to guess at whether or not I've got what they want. When they read that title and it's nice and clear and they look and then, oh, there's, I can see very clearly that's an old blues t-shirt. I'm interested in that. When they open it, they're done reading for the most part. I hate to tell you that they're not going to read a lot. We're going to put some things in the listing to protect us a little bit, but the buyer is going to go through the pictures and make a decision. I want my pictures not to make my item look amazing. I want it to look accurate. I want to take a picture of every angle of what I've included and I want those pictures to be clear. 
So I don't put accessories around it. This isn't a photo shoot. I want them to know if they're buying this shirt, I want them to see the cracked up paint. I want them to see the faded black. I want them to see the tags so that when they're done looking at my pictures, they know exactly what I've got and they can decide whether or not it's exactly what they want. And don't forget at the end of this video, there's a big difference between beginning sellers and pro sellers in regards to their feedback. And I'm going to tell you how to bump that up. But first, let's talk about what style of listing that you want to do. You're going to have to make a decision on whether you want to do an auction or buy it now. I have made longer videos talking about this. I have very strong opinions about it. And so let me tell you exactly what we do and it works for us. So auction, I only run an auction if I have an item with a very, very high demand, like everybody is looking for one. And then two, it's got a very, very low supply. Everybody's looking, nobody has one. And further, I pick an item that I'm going to run on an auction that I'm pretty sure I know the minimum of what it's worth, but I don't know where the ceiling is. I know where the floor is. I don't know where the ceiling is. If you're going to have an item that could go for, you know, it's going to go for a hundred, but will it hit 600 or 1600? And occasionally when I come across those kind of items and I know everybody's looking, I will run an auction. A good example of that is I found a Mitchell pattern M65 jacket. I'll put up a picture of it. Got it at the Goodwill bins, paid $5 for it. And I knew that there was supposedly none left anywhere in the world. There was one for sale about 15 years ago and it went in that $600 range. So I knew mine was going to be worth a lot. There are YouTube videos about the Mitchell pattern in the Mitchell jacket. And there's lots of places you can find that talk about it. Nobody had one except me. And I put my starting bid at my floor. It ended up going for over $1,200. That's the kind of item that I run an auction on. Most of the things that Melody and I sell, we sell on buy it now. But here's the great thing about buy it now. If you did your research at the beginning and you know that, 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 that this shirt is going to sell for around $30 and you don't mind waiting and there's not many for sale. So you're going to price it at say 39 or best offer. Or let's say your business model is different and you want to sell everything as fast as you can list it. And you know, they're selling for, for 25, you could price yours at 18 and get it gone quick. And, and at that price, maybe you're not doing any best offer, but auction or buy it now auction for those things that really, really check all the boxes on demand and they check none of the boxes on supply that there are none available. That is something that I would run an auction on. Everything else is a buy it now for us. You're going to get towards the bottom of your listing and there's another place you're going to have to make a decision. And it's one of the most controversial places that you're going to come across. And that is shipping. Are you going to do calculated or are you going to do fixed price shipping? And I'm going to tell you why we use fixed price for most of the items that we do and why we don't use calculated shipping for most things. There are items that we do calculated. Let's talk about when would I use calculated shipping? Well, let's say that I've got a large heavy item that I want to be able to send it to Alaska or Hawaii or something like that. I can't put a fixed price because we're in Texas. If I send it somewhere in Texas, it's probably not going to be too bad, but if it had to go to Hawaii, I'm going to spend a ton but maybe that is an item that I want available everywhere. And on that one, as long as I've got accurate packaged dimensions and weight, I know what it's going to weigh packed up and I know the dimensions of it packed up. If I enter those in there and I put calculated, then it bases the cost on where the buyer is. And so I can keep from getting stung like that. There's a couple of reasons we don't use that for most of the items that we sell. If I'm going to sell this shirt, I know this shirt right here is going to fold up. It's going to go in a poly mailer. It's going to run about 14 ounces. And I know about how much it's going to cost to mail it. It's I'm going to probably charge $5.99 for it. And shipping is going to fall around the $6 mark. If they're way away, it might cost me a dollar more. 
we, we normally get our cost of goods cheap enough that a dollar one way or the other isn't going to kill me. The reason I don't want to use calculated is it creates an extra step in there for the buyer. If the buyer looks and the shirt is $24.99 and the shipping is $5.99, they can look at it and know about how much it's going to cost when they, when they click on it and it'll add tax. If I have the shirt for $24.99 and calculated shipping, they have to click on it in order to find out how much shipping is going to cost to them. And I'm here telling you right now, the more steps you put in between a buyer looking at an item and buying an item, the less likely you are to make a sale. And the second part that I don't care for calculated shipping is, is when eBay calculates those, it adds a little to it. Even if you don't have handling in there, it costs more than what you're probably going to charge the customer. So not only do they go through the extra step of clicking on it, but they're probably going to get a higher price in return for that. This is a bonus tip for you. One of the things that you're going to fight when you first get started is you're not going to have any feedback. If you have an old account, I get this question all the time. If you have an old account and you're like, well, all I ever did is buy on that. So what? If it has feedback on it, use that account. If there's nothing broken about the other account, use that one. But if you've got a brand new account and you need to build some feedback, eBay makes no difference in that number when you see how many feedback you have. eBay doesn't make any distinction between whether you bought something or you sold something. So you're going to need the few supplies that you need. Buy them from sellers that you can tell they leave feedback. Make sure that you're getting feedback for those things that you buy because if you buy your tape and you buy a few poly mailers and you buy some scissors and just a few odds and ends, pretty soon you've got 10 or 12 feedback even before you've sold something. Why that helps is that feedback, it makes you look like you know what you're doing. And knowing what you're doing also scares off some of the scammers. The best part about earning a little bit of feedback is those people that are trying to take advantage of you fade into the background. With those five things, focusing on those five areas and building your feedback, you're going to list like a pro. And when you list like a pro, you're going to sell like a pro. Check out right here and I'm going to take you through the entire listing process.